When it comes to fitness or your performance in the gym, the following is true. You are only as strong as your weakest link. All right, this is an old saying, but it literally means, if you think of a chain, it can only pull as much as its weakest link can hold on to. Well, your body has governors as well. In other words, if your grip is weak, if you don't have good stabilization or good control, then your strength will be limited. Your body will limit your strength, thus limiting your gains and your progress. So remember this with your workouts. So grip is an obvious one, right? Because if you can't pick up the bar, you can't hold on to the bar for deadlift, it's obvious. What other ones that like come to mind when you think about like limiting factors that I think people don't realize in like movements? This happens all the time with the big lifts. So yes. when you first start working out, you want to focus on those big lifts. But if that's all you ever focus on, at some point what you'll find is these weird nagging aches and pains. Like, yeah, I can bench and I bench a lot, but my shoulder always kind of bothers me, you know, mm -hmm. maybe in the front or the back or... My overhead press, once I get past this weight, I seem to injure myself. Or when I squat, I feel it on the side of yeah, my, my knee. My knee hurts. Yeah, and then what people tend to do is they'll wear like knee wraps or braces or belts you know, or straps. Yeah, just to, or back, you know, back issues. Like I squat, 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 and then all of a sudden I get this back pain. It's always in the same so spot. So that's not what I was thinking about. What I was thinking about when I asked that was so limiting factor for deadlifts a lot of times uh, is grip strength, right? So you, oh. they, they, they're, you are too weak to hold on to the bar. And so it's not that your, your hips or your legs couldn't drive more weight. It's that you can't hold on the bar. And so that's a limiting factor. Squatting. I've seen this happen before where you just have a weak core. You have the mm -hmm. inability to completely. And then, well, that's what re results in the injuries. I right. Let power yeah. leaks out overhead press, like shoulder mobi mobility and stability. Like you yeah, can't instability there. You can't yeah. hold and sustain it overhead. So that I was seeking that from you, mm -hmm. right? Like, can you guys think of like these, cause everybody wants to have these strong where most people want to have mm -hmm. a, a big squat, a big deadlift, a big bench press, a big overhead squat or overhead press. But a lot of times they don't realize that what's keeping them from moving up in that weight isn't necessarily just moving more weight on the bar or doing more of that movement. Sometimes there is a weak link that is keeping them from progressing in that yes. lift they want to get strong in. And I wanted you guys to list some ideas of what those some of those could be. I know that grip strength sometimes is that for like the deadlift. I think mm -hmm. of core for that, or for the squat. Stability. I think for sh shoulder stability or mobility for overhead mm -hmm. pressing, even like bench press sometimes can be that you way. Know, what, this is literally, uh, your body literally protects itself. Your central nervous system will limit movement. It'll limit ranges of motion. It'll prevent you from expressing more strength than it believes is safe for you. This is why, by the way, under duress, you can actually, ten, you, you, you're able to express more strength, like the famous stories of the mom that lifts the car off the baby, and, but she never works out. How is that possible? Her body was like, this scary thing is more important well, than the fact that you can hurt yourself, and it allows you to exert more. But your, your central nervous system is controlling this. I think, uh, I guess an example too with that, uh, what you're talking about, Adam, is like range of motion, depth in that range of motion. Yep. So mm -hmm. like it, getting deeper in a squat, all of a sudden now you don't have that kind of same force output. Like you're not familiar with that um, enough to where you've trained that. And so now like a lot of times, uh, especially if you're in competition and then you're, now you're being judged and, and you're used to like going to a certain depth, but they want lower. Yeah. Uh, and then it's like very surprising and enlightening, like how your body doesn't respond the same way because you don't have that stability and that kind of, uh, ability to generate force in, you know, a certain depth and a further range Here, of motion. Here's your evidence right here. You take somebody who's been working out for a while and they squat for a while. Then you have them wear a weight belt. Instantly add 20, 30 pounds to their lift or at least 10 pounds. How'd that happen? Are they are they are their quads stronger? Their hamstrings stronger? Their glutes mm -hmm. stronger? No, the belt produced an external form of stability. And so the body allowed them or that feeling of stability, that increased stability allowed them to generate more force. So these are all limiting factors that a lot of workout programs don't take into account. And so you see people, they don't realize that this is why their their lifts aren't going up or why they're not progressing. It's because, well, you're not training in, in the lateral plane, let's say, or you don't do anything with rotation. And so your body's stopping you in your tracks. Well, this was always my argument because, I mean, I – I mean, I'm a meathead at heart too. Like I, 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 I'll train heavy and like, I was always into like, just trying to, to maximize my output with bench and, and deadlift and squat and all those types of things. But like, I was like, 
you know, a long time ago advocating for mobility. And it was a really hard sell amongst a lot of like athletes or amongst a lot of like bros, oh, especially and, bros, right? you know, they just like, what's the value in that? Like, cause you look stupid. You look like it has nothing to do with the, voice, the voices that you make about this. It's hundred percent <laughs> accurate. Don't act like it's not like, what are you doing, bro? Yeah. <laughs> stupid. Right. And, uh, you know, and for me, it's like, okay, well to your point, you're limited now and, and, and you're, you're limiting your strength potential because you're not putting the work in, uh, to, uh, strengthen and stabilize around the joints. So your body feels like it's safe and, and able to, uh, supply your body well, with more force. With, it's, it's so like we, I mean, we obviously managing gyms, you see this all the time. We've all probably experienced it ourselves. I know I have, but I remember specifically, so I won't, I won't get too detailed cause I don't want to embarrass this person, but. We have people come in and we film uh, workouts or exercises or programs using individuals uh, for these programs or workouts oh, and stuff. I thought you were saying that like you're going to embarrass somebody who's in here. No, not in here. I feel like we bagged like, on this I was guy. Like, a couple you know. of, fuck you, USA, bro, right no, now. It can only be me or Justin. <laughs> His name sounds like Schmato. But anyway, no. This guy. <laughs> this, we, we had somebody come in and we were filming some exercises, okay? And we were doing just a standard overhead shoulder press. Now, this person, they had great physique. They trained like a bodybuilder. They moved like a bodybuilder, though, the stereotype, right? Kind of stiff. They could not do a full extended, just a basic overhead press. By the way, when people get old, this becomes a problem. This yeah. person was, I believe, in their early 30s. Yeah. They looked like fit. tip-top shape. They could not do a full they're, extended. They were, in their, they were in their early 30s, and they were also a pro athlete, pro, yeah. pro C competitor on competitor, the stage, right? Yeah. They also couldn't do overhead tricep extension yeah. because their body limited them. Like that's the that's where the myth of muscle bound comes from. Because you would have people lifting weights, not training full ranges of motion, not training in different planes. And then what happens is their body limits them, limits them, limits them more and more and more to the to the areas that they train in. And they've got a lot of strength in those areas, but their body continues to limit them because it's scared of injuring, of, of them getting hurt, and it, mi and it minimizes their ability to progress. What's funny, too, is that individual who's trying to develop an incredible physique, if they started working on fully extending and worked on mobility, what they would better, do, better physique. Yeah. They, they build more delts yeah. yep. as a uh -huh. result of doing that. Yeah. I've also seen this with guys with, with their shoulder press just going all the way down. Like, you know, they stop at the 90 degree, day, and then you tell them to come all the way down, they hurt their shoulder. Yep. Even going light, they yeah. say, oh, that hurts my shoulder. Like, that's a that's a crappy place to be. Yeah. Today's giveaway is MAPS Anabolic. Here's how you can enter to win. Leave a comment below this video in the first 24 hours that we drop it. Subscribe to this channel and turn on notifications. If you win, we'll let you know in the comment section. We also have a sale going on right now. MAPS Performance is half off, and our Extreme Fitness Bundle of Programs is also half off. If you're interested, click on the link at the top of the description below. All right, back to the show. Anyway, I got a, yeah. I got a, some some cool studies to bring up, and I found an older study because I was looking up studies on sleep deprivation and fat loss and diet and stuff like that. So there was a recent kind of meta analysis. There's some messed up studies on sleep deprivation, right? Oh, were they like really those push Russian it? studies? Oh, yeah. those were. Have you heard of Have you ever heard of those? No, like torture. Oh, yeah, basically, dude. yes. Like, well, that's what it is. So how they do a study on it? How they get that passed? Well, this is just. Testing it's like, like Soviet, people are sleeping Soviet like, Union, obviously. Yes. Yeah, of course. Yes, it's so bro. fucked up. Yeah, they went oh. to the extreme with it for sure. Yeah. Like, uh, no, the studies I'm going to talk about are like people who get you know like six sad? hours or five hours. What's sad yeah. about it? It's sad that, that I could guess that, but it's also like some of the best studies because they, <laughs> they have no morals. Dude. <laughs> they, can push, they would push the boundaries like it's that. It's terrible. But yeah. give you, it, there's a, there's a, there's a, a story, and I don't, I don't know if it's true or not, but they tested extreme sleep deprivation. Um, on like uh, prisoners and stuff. And I think it's after, I want to say after five days or something like that of not sleeping and they would keep them up to see what would happen. So yeah. the person would try to fall asleep standing up and they'd keep them up. I believe after five days, if I'm not mistaken, a majority of people start to exhibit signs of uh, like clear schizophrenia. Like psychosis. Yeah, psychosis. Like you go crazy. Like you're totally sane. Mm -hmm. If we push this like five days, I remember it's something like 80% of people actually went crazy. Yep. They did one with a bunch of, I think there were like five people in there and uh, one of the people killed and eight yeah. the other people. Eight. and like turn in, yes. It yeah, went like, crazy. Like really dark. Almost them. like, uh, yeah, some what? zombie movie. <laughs> like yeah. crazy. What? It's a story. I don't know if it's true or not. But I know. I've, I've read the same legend. thing. So. You read the same? Yes. You and yes. I read the same. I know. Scary shit. So go into the study. Sorry. Yeah. So anyway, yeah. Yeah, so there was a meta-analysis and what they found in the meta-analysis, and we know this, is that it, the 
the the body when it lacks sleep this is the theory right when it lacks sleep and these people were not like the soviet study they were like you couldn't sleep for five days it was like they got six and a half hours of sleep a night like you know parents will do or people are under a lot of stress or whatever right or even they even included in this this is why i like the study um like eight hours of sleep that wasn't good quality so, so a lot of studies are on just the time. This one also looked at, these people are going to bed, uh-huh. eight hours sleep, but they're not getting, not all, getting deep are, sleep. Yes. Are you familiar with this? So I've seen the studies and, and stats on that. I wish I re- can recall what it was. Maybe you remember, but like, okay, so REM and deep are like the important yeah. two hour blocks that we're supposed to get. I think right? so. Yeah. I, I believe that's right. Right. Okay. And someone, I'm sure someone will correct me if I'm wrong, but it's something like that. Right. That those are the two so most important blocks. Four hour REM and uh, two and two, oh, it's two, two, two and two, two REM, yeah. two deep, yeah. I believe is like the, is, and the, and the sweet number is like an hour and a half to two hours and anything less than that, like your, your risk of like cancer, your risk, like oh, yeah. your, like it's like it goes dramatically up yeah. once you get like like yeah. an hour like and I look at mine like there's a lot of times where I'm under two in those it's an hour and a half even like, though you get you're in bed right right I only get an hour and a half or so of the of the and you want to be like at least an hour and a half to ideally two or in the in those and anything once you go from uh, one and a half hour less than that like I want to say an hour or less it like dramatically increases the risk all, of all those oh issues. yeah like well, a so, lot so i'm not even going that far and in fact check me where i'm talking yeah, about yeah let's see what that is though in this study the the um the cravings that the people had from just not getting optimal sleep so it's not like it's it's like like i said it's a lot of people get sleep like this six and a half hours it's craving so coffee. bad you'll be my crave people yeah <laughs> <laughs> hey, that's how far the cravings get. <laughs> very much to the extreme. The, the scare, hey, the, the, the scare, proved it. scare everybody into sleep hey, so bad. Day, day one. Yeah. Get yeah. your sleep. Yeah. Day one. Oh, I really we'll want donuts. Yeah. Day two. Oh, I kind of want soda and cake. Yeah. Yeah. Day, three, day three. Some day, human flesh yeah. sounds really good. And Bob looks yeah. delicious. <laughs> Bob is looking really damn delicious. Right <laughs> I wish I knew that style. That's how I scare my clients into sleeping better. Hey, listen. listen. <laughs> you don't want cravings. No, 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 I'm good with cravings. No, listen, you want to eat your friends? Yeah. So anyway, they the craving Cravings went up dramatically, and it was uh, it was mostly for hyper palatable foods. So cravings went up, but it wasn't for like healthy food. It was for comfort foods. And what's happening is the two reasons they think. One is those comfort foods make you feel temporarily better. So it's like a it's kind of like a drug. And the second reason is your body perceives a chronic kind of lack of sleep as a stress. And one of your safeguards against stress is gain body fat. Mm-hmm. Gain body fat yeah. so that if when the Your shit is the insurance pol- policy. Yes. Yeah. Now this led me to finding another study which was fascinating. This study's over, I want to say over 13 years old, uh, old, but it was really interesting. So let me find this one. Why are you looking that up, Doug? Did you get me some facts over there, or Andrew? Yeah, I'm looking for uh, exact times. They give it more as a percentage of total sleep time. Uh, so deep sleep, for example, should be 10 to 20 percent of total sleep. Hmm. Uh, I believe REM is around the same amount, 20 25 percent. 20, 20, well, 25% of eight hours would be two hours, right? Yeah. Is that right? Yeah. Yeah. yeah okay. uh, so, so same difference. Right, right. Okay. All right. So check so, this but, out. But I think I, uh, Cabral what I, said, though, for deep sleep, he said you should hit around 70 minutes. I, I believe that's what he said. When well, he that, and that goes back to my point. It's an hour and a half to two hours is the range. Yeah. So that's like optimal is supposed to be an hour and a half to two of the two the two blocks. I'm pretty yeah. sure of this. What I was looking for from you was a stat on if you get less than oh. that, how much that increases oh. your risk of cancer and, and other things. I forgot what it was was but i had just recently read this so it's interesting you went this direction and I, it, it, I forgot to bring it up it was in my notes to talk about it because I, I was so alarmed by the difference of just like 20 30 minutes less of that deep or mm. rem how dramatic of a difference like all it, cause mortality yes and markers. yes well, it, like it went up like 50 percent. Mm. it was Listen, like a lot i'm about to sell sleep right now because I when, I, when, that. when i read this study i was like oh, i can't believe i've ever heard of this so they took groups of people and this was a control this is what i like about it, it was controlled it was in a lab and they control their calories, and they tested uh, weight, fat mass, lean body mass, okay? They took these individuals, and they did a phase of uh, eight and a half hours uh, of, in bed, which was on average about seven hours and 25 minutes of sleep, okay? okay? They also took the p- individuals, and again, control, 1,450 calories per day. They put everybody on a diet, okay? They took uh, another group, and they put them in uh, to sleep for five hours and 14, uh, 14 minutes, so... Roughly a two-hour difference in sleep. Now both groups lost the same weight. Okay, same amount of weight on the scale, but mm-hmm. trip off this. Right, one lost a lot of muscle. The 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 group that yes, the group that got the worst sleep, only one fourth of their weight came from fat. One fourth. 
Wow. Mm. Three-fourths came from muscle. Now, wow. the other group, almost wow. half, came from muscle, which it's, is okay, expected. Okay, so people have to... Wow. You, you have, now, for us, that's obvious, right? We understand what, what that is. Yeah. It's like you're you're not getting the most important time when it comes to recovery and building muscle and muscle is a very expensive tissue. And so the body is, is getting the signal of like, Oh, you're fucking me. You're not giving me the rest I need. I'm not able to prioritize let's make, this. Let's make ourselves harder or, or easier to survive. In yes. A low more resilient stress environment. Right. And so it says, okay, let's pare down. Like, so, so great. Look at the individuals who slept less than six hours, which is basically the thing that I was saying, right? So if 41% you really, higher risk of cancer. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. Crazy, but I mean, forty-one percent. But again, trip off this: the average person, if you just cut your calories, you don't lift weights, you don't eat high protein, you just cut your calories, you lose weight. Across the board, data shows forty percent of it will be muscle. That's expected. Okay, now if you lift weights, eat protein, high protein, then you'll you'll you won't do that. But average person, that's what happens. If your sleep is bad, one fourth is fat. The rest is muscle. So now think of someone who's lifting weights, eating protein, they're doing everything right, they're on a calorie deficit, yeah, but not but their sleep, sleep is crap. Yep. Yep. Now yep. you're screwed. <laughs> yeah. All from sleep. Right. All from sleep. So it's like the most anabolic or catabolic thing you could possibly do uh, has to do with your that's sleep. That's why I don't even consider supplements. I mean, that's your that's your key right there. I, ju I just had that conversation too. Who was that? It was somebody in my family that was asking about some latest supplement or like that. And I'm like, when was the last time you did like a real sleep analysis? Like checked like- yeah. I was going to ask you guys, because you, you, you have the ring, right? Aura ring? I have the aura, but I also use the eight sleep. I was going to say, what was the difference before, after? Have you noticed improvements? And then what about when you're not in that bed? And you're at like we travel or something like that. What do you see? Well, it, it depends on what kind of bed I'm in, right? We tend to we tend to travel relatively nice, right? Okay. So we stay in like mm -hmm. nice beds and AC and all that stuff like that. Uh, so as long as I'm in a situation like that, like my sleep is okay or good, right? But the the eight sleep has been like night and day difference for me. If that's if I don't have that, like which I have, I've had it now for years, like me getting into a deep sleep and falling asleep is so much more difficult because I, my, my temperature, I get so hot so fast. Even if it's like cold out in the room, mm -hmm. my body heats up under the sheets and then it'll wake me up sometimes where I'm, I'm so warm. I'm kicking off sheets and then I don't sleep well if I don't have any how covers on it, me. How long does it take for the algorithm, the AI to figure you out? Is it a week? That's a good question. I bet you could look up what they say. Um, and it's always it adjusting. Is. Because your body changes. I'm trying to recall, like, I, it, it actually, so I didn't know it was going to do that. So I didn't even know that. So I thought I was manually setting it. And then I remember one day um, I got on there because I, it didn't feel ice, ice cold. Like, so I had already set it, right? This was like a couple weeks after we I had set it all up and I we had owned it. And, you know, the initial, like, when I first set it, I set it up as cold as you could possibly go. And that thing gets way colder than the, the Oolers get. And so it would be like a, like a fucking icebox. And I'm laying in bed one night, and I'm like, huh, it doesn't feel like an icebox. I'm like, I wonder if it's on. And I look down at the thing, and it's like, it was at a different temperature. And I was like, that's weird. I set it at the lowest temperature. Why is it saying it's at minus four right now? It should be minus eight or whatever the lowest setting is. And then I looked on it, and that's where I looked at the, the looked into the AI thing. I thought, oh shit! It saw that you slept better it, on that. Yes, it uh. figured it out. And then now, and and then I saw so I have yet to touch it or mess with it now. And now it's completely like molded wow. to my routine. What time I go to bed? How cold it needs to be? And what's cool about that was initially when I did it, I would just drop it as low as possible, and you know I'd be cold. There'd be like a little bit, but I'd rather be cold because then I know I would be all right through the night versus being at all borderline do you, hot. Do you know how it adjusts throughout the night for? You? Does it? Did you, are you able to look at a report to show that? Oh, it goes. It warms up here, cools down here. So I can see that. Although I have, I, and I and I know. I'm interested to see that. I know enough that it's not what I, like. So it, it starts off real cold, right? So I know it drops w minus eight when I initially first get in it, and then it slowly kind of brings me up in the middle of the night, and then like and brings me up means like it's like minus two or minus one is like the warmest mm -hmm. it lets my bet get. And then it actually goes down a little bit, I believe. That's like, so weird. Yeah, it's yeah. A, yeah. And then and then it comes back up at the it's end. Cool. Of, at, so it's adjusting, trying to get you to sleep better. Yeah, and and it's using because I of course I get up and go to the bathroom and it tracks your REM and deep sleep, and so it's figuring out like oh when we've put keep him at this temperature he gets this much more REM or this and then it and it you know keeps, when they if they can, if someone can design a, a bed for a infant that puts them to sleep and reads the baby because there's they have stuff now that's like really good. But it still doesn't like, it's not like a person to put them, that they'll become billionaires overnight. Cause it's, it is <laughs> talk about loss of sleep. When you have a kid, a baby, you're not going to sleep. If there was a way you could put it on and the AI 
No, oh, the cry's going here. Oh, move in position here. Do this, and then you just put them there. Oh, yeah, like, I wonder. Oh, that would be a game. You know, I don't know if we'll ever get there. I'd just be worried there'd be a glitch or something. Well, like, I also like the I also yeah. think that, you know, we talk about this, right, with oxytocin. <laughs> frustrated, We too. talk about this with, like, oxytocin know, and stuff yeah. like that. There's something you about miss the, that bond. Yeah, yeah, there's something about the human touch that, you know, that is very unique and special to a, a, a newborn. I don't know. I mean, this is. But it's torture. <laughs> yeah, I, no, I'm saying, I, I, my so my brother-in-law, he's his, he just found out his wife is pregnant, and he has his old his kid is how old is she now? Nine. So it's been a while, and he's like, oh yeah, I, I vaguely remember. I'm like, bro, you're in for it. You're not gonna get no sleep, you know. And no. that's for a while. Anyway, speaking of kids, I gotta tell you guys about my three year old and how he lied to us last night in the funniest way oh, ever. God. Oh, oh God. it's hilarious. So we I, I wrote down the quote because I couldn't believe he said this. So I was looking for the remote control to the television. So before he goes to bed, depending on how the day goes, we'll let him watch about 15 minutes uh, of TV. And I'll, I'll set a timer for him. It's like, okay, buddy, 15 minutes. You can watch your favorite show or whatever. And then when the timer goes off, we'll turn it off. And then we go in his room, read a story, do the whole thing. So I did that, right? Let's put the timer on. Timer goes off. And I'm looking for the remote control. And I'm, I can't find it. I'm like, oh, I get so frustrated. This is like a dad thing, I think. When you lose remote control, you want to flip the house upside down. So I'm going to the couches. I'm looking all over. Can't find it. He's getting up, helping us look. Where'd it go? I don't know. Jessica <laughs> helping. Where is it? I don't know. We're, we're looking for it. And then he sits down. He goes, oh, gosh. He goes, this is what he says. He goes, if we can't turn off the TV, I guess I'm, I'm just going to have to watch it and watch it and watch it. <laughs> you watch it and watch it and watch it. <laughs> so Jessica and I look at each other. We're kind of like, wait a minute. Hold on a second. <laughs> so I go, something do, smells do, fishy. I go, do you know where the remote control is? He goes, no, I probably don't. I'm like, probably? I'm like, okay. So we still look. We still look. And he goes, uh, you know, maybe you look behind the couch. I'm like, oh, this kid threw the remote control behind the couch. <laughs> but he was, you could tell he's like felt a little bad or guilty. Uh, yeah. <laughs> if we can't turn it off, I guess we just, I just have to watch it and watch it. That's how it works, dude. I can unplug it, you know? <laughs> yeah. Kids are hilarious. Oh, yeah. my God. You're so clever. When they start to lie, it's just the funniest Oh, thing. God. Uh, are, yeah, it's, and I think as a dad, one of the hardest things is to, like, to not laugh at it, right? Because mm -hmm. there's a part Oh, we went on the corner. I know, and we were cracking up. Yeah. I don't want him to think it's. Funny, I know. Yeah. Katrina and I have these moments where we're like, don't, don't let him see you laughing right now. But that's absolutely hilarious that he's doing shit like that. I have a I have a trivia for you guys that uh, just, just popped in. I totally forgot I wanted to ask you guys this. So uh, any guesses? Ken, here's the deal. I'll get a hundred bucks to the guy who can be within a thousand. If you can guess within a thousand of these two things, okay. How many total Starbucks Wait, are there? Are you really gonna pay us? Huh? A yeah. thousand? No, no. The, within a thousand. I'll oh, give you oh a, my bad. I got a hundred bucks on me. I'll give you a hundred bucks. <laughs> okay. I, I actually have that on me. I'll give it to you. For real? You, yeah, yeah. For real. Right, right, okay. Right, right. You have to be within a thousand of each of them, right? Okay, okay. The two things. Okay. First one is a Starbucks. Okay. How many Starbucks are in the United States? Oh, in the United Locations? States alone? Yes. Okay. Oh my God. Hold on. Within a uh, thousand, I'm letting you guys be. So uh, I feel like Doug will have the best guess here. I'm going to say... You got to be able to get both of them in order to win the hundred bucks because I feel like that one's easier than the second one I'm going to give you. I'll say uh, twenty-seven thousand. You got to guess for the U.S. locations. Yeah. No, I'm going up in the couple hundred thousand range. Whoa. Okay. Yeah. I'm going to say fourteen thousand. Ooh. Andrew, you want to guess? Sixteen thousand three hundred eighty. Pull up the internet. See what. what oh, what, <laughs> did you look it up? Yes. Did he say? What did you say? What was the exact number? I was like, damn, that's why I'm really close to what I think I read right there. Okay, so here's this case. So how much? Tell him, Andrew. What is this? What, what is, is it? it? Sixteen thousand three hundred. Oh my god, that's way off. Okay. Guess, Jesus, just, okay, no, this is a, just, a, just like it a feels million. Like, hey, he's like, feels like it. <laughs> Justin's like, it feels it's a like big number, you guys. Ah, he just comes up with the hey, number. I'm not the fucking number guy. So here's the this was the the of the this is the two that go together that I, this one actually I was so off because of this. How many churches are in the United States? Oh, oh wow, churches, yeah. It's, Oh, see, I'm gonna do just as bad with this. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> fifty thousand. Um. Do you think there's actual no, no, churches? I, I, yeah, yeah. I say twenty thousand. How about that? That's, okay, no, that's all. I'm gonna go less. I'm gonna say ten thousand. Don't I, say I, it, Andrew. I'm, I'm gonna go higher. Twenty five thousand. Four hundred thousand. Oh wow, I was way off. 
Right. No idea. I give up, dude. I should have flipped that. But hold on. That, let's well, consider it a church, though. Is it an actual physical building, or like, are there laws that allow you to be like, this is a church? Well, because there's know? so many different like denominations. Yeah. There's yeah. You know, I just like like you. I actually, you know, what went my because I, I think church. Well, I think first like, I went. I see Starbucks I, on every, every corner. corner, and then one. Yeah, exactly. And there's some of them are like on the same street. Yeah. And, and d- does it count the ones that are in Target? Yeah. Does it yeah. Count yeah. The ones that are <laughs> yeah. The, the, I was. That's my logic. I, I was, was like, thinking the same thing, and that's still those all count. They're like six. 15,000 of those were like that. Uh, but I didn't think that I ever see that many churches. 400,000. That's just because of where we live, I think, too. Is yeah. that what it is? Yeah, like, maybe we go back. Yeah, you're probably right. Like, middle the America, Bible Belt, stuff yeah, like that. I'm wondering over. what's considered a church. Okay, I mean, well, we're let, thinking of traditional. Okay, let's, let's factor in what you're everywhere saying. And, yeah. What do you, Especially I, mi- the Bible I guarantee belt. there's still yeah. half of those are hard locations. How many Catholic churches are there in the U.S.? Just look that up. And that's just one. That's just Catholic. Just to get give me a number of what that looks like. What does that help you with? I, be, I think there's that like would, fucking 50 less, denominations. Less than, Why would that know, help? Because it? I'm trying to, I, I wonder what they consider. Cause, Cause you're right. trying to say like someone started a business, said they're a church and they don't or even have an actual house. They don't have an actual church. location. Yeah, Cause I'm thinking of, yeah, no, I bet I there's see. an exact, what is it Doug? What does it say? Uh, more than 20,000 oh, Catholic wow. buildings. That's just Catholic buildings. Yeah, wow. yeah. So yeah. Think wow. about that. Yes. Yeah, oh, so that's good. 400,000. Yeah. I did not realize that there was that many. Wow. Yeah, that makes now, sense. You if think a, about there it. was a Starbucks it in does. every church, they would crush. Now right? we're talking. Now we're talking. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, because their their coffee always sucks. Yeah. <laughs> it's the worst. Yeah. The, the only thing worse is church coffee. And the only thing worse is Starbucks yeah. coffee is church yeah. coffee. Yeah. It's free, bro. <laughs> coffee and cookies and you know, it's, it's like it's, all this like it's uh, free. Uh, that's terrible expect. food. It's free coffee. I know, I know, but it's like, you know, the one that has a Starbucks, they're gonna get yeah, the but, followers. Come on, bro. You know what I mean? Like come on, Joe, Joe Osteen knows what I'm talking. Do they do they You're water, though? Hey, was it? Did you guys see the the shooting outside of his church? Oh, what man, happened? What inside. Did, oh, it was inside. Yeah. Oh man, it's, yeah, it's horrible. It, it, dude. I, from my, now I heard I somebody it was a woman. It was a woman. I heard a, a civilian shot her though, right? Uh, Off duty officer. Off duty officers. Off duty officer. So, uh, I don't want to look into it because yeah, a no, five year old hit. He got, he got hit like uh, as they were like shooting her. Oh, oh no! Jesus. It breaks my heart, dude. Yeah. I don't oh talk no! About it. I know that's why I, I purposely like, oh, didn't talk about it because it me kills me. Oh, yeah. I didn't know that. And then there was one today too with the chief celebration. Like I did see yeah, that. So I, also, I, civilians tackled tackled that person too. Yes, Is that they right? did. <laughs> they did. Which huh. I'm glad to see. You know, the community kind of you know rally against that. But it's like, oh my god, all know, these popping up. It it makes me sad. Do you know how many? Maybe you could look this up, Doug. How many? Um, like. Uh, crimes or murders or I don't know how you would look this up are prevented from civilians with guns. It's a big number. Yeah. Is it really? Yes. It's a very, it, people I, defending I themselves with firearms is a yeah. big number. Yeah. There was one video, there's this famous <laughs> video where there's, there's this guy pulls out a gun and there was a mom and she pulled it out of her purse. And yeah, you know, I know mom. Doug hates when we talk about stuff like this that's controversial and shit like that, but Why it's it like, I know what I'm going to say, oh. uh, which is that like I just, I think the people that think trying to eliminate guns is the way the strategy to eliminate things like this is is such a backwards way of thinking. And why? And hear me out. You the reason eliminate why the black market. You'll, first. Exa- you'll never be able to get rid of every every. Gun well, the guns are here. Yeah. That's the bottom line. It's, right. And so, so unless the, we can magic. So the safest thing, safest approach to gun violence is actually arming more people. Yep. Is if because if these people that get away with this bullshit, if they were afraid that every other person potentially could have a gun, the likelihood you would do some stupid shit like that yeah. dramatically reduces. Well, they're just they're just they're already out there. There's more there are more guns than there are uh, citizens and the black market we have you no know, idea. There's, there's more guns. Okay, check me on this stat, but there's more guns in the United States of like civilians owning guns than there are in every um country's military. Oh, I believe that. Wow. What it's does that crazy. say there, Doug? So, I don't know uh if guns prevent an estimated 2.5 million crimes a year. Yes. Um, most often, the gun is never fired, which is true. Okay, wait a second, Sal. That's not a good stat. That includes officers. Yes, it does. But the next one, so uh, well, okay, 400,000 life-threatening violent crimes are prevented using firearms. 60% get- of convicted felons admitted that they have avoided committing crimes when they knew the victim was armed. 60%. 40% of convicted felons admit- admitted that they avoided committing crimes when they thought the victim might be armed. Okay. Well, I mean, that that is a good stat, and yeah. that's proving my point. If, like, if you thought... That somebody might have a gun, you yeah. you'd be way, way less likely to rob <laughs> or to pull a gun yourself. Yeah. Yep. Half of these people are cowards. Yeah. Half of these people that do this 100%. stuff are not like, 
they're not at all mm-hmm. confident, strong people. These are weak ass, scared people that do this. Yeah. And I guarantee if they thought they're going to st- take the path of least resistance, you know, and, and to do whatever evil they're going to do. Yeah, I know. That's uh, that's crazy. I hate hearing stuff the like that, the chief. Sorry to nag everybody out, but you just reminded me that we we're talking about the churches. I had just seen that, and I didn't know that. I didn't know what had happened. Like if people were injured, what in the chief one? The chiefs one was there if people injured? Yeah, right? it was like uh, ten or fifteen, I think, injured. And there was like I saw one uh, might be reported dead. So mm-hmm. oh man, that speaking of too. crimes and stuff, I was just watching on on this is a little little lighter. Uh, I was on social media, and uh, I love. I love these videos. These are my favorite videos. There's a lot of package thieves that are out there. And then there's a lot of people, there's a lot of thieves that will break in your car and steal things. They'll just open, crack, you know, smash the window, take things. And there are people now that are making popular viral videos and channels where they will stage put, it. They'll take a package. Yeah. They'll put a camera in there. They'll mm. put like something that explodes glitter and fart spray or something like that. <laughs> yeah. And Amazing. I was just watching when it was hilarious. Like he put it in his car, thief smashes the window, takes the box. Three, and he gets into a car with his buddy and they take off and then the and then the glitter bomb goes off. And then you hear you hear the spray. And they're like, oh, what's that smell? Oh, oh shit, oh dump it. I've I love those oh, I love those God. videos, dude. So I feel nice. like that's what that's what I would do if so if I if somebody Justice. was like carjacking or doing that in our neighborhood would be like to try and come up with some sort of a, a prank like that to get people back. You know? Yeah. Did you have you ever guys ever seen like um car security systems that never made it to the market? There's one that's like a blow. It's like a flamethrower. Have you ever seen these? No. Oh, they're amazing. They're like, like they're trying to get your car. I think Brazil. I think in Brazil they might have actually used this because there were car car I car think th- I, I, think I have seen that. We're underneath the, from the underneath the car. Yeah, so they're trying to break in. There's a button you push and it just <laughs> lights yeah. their ass up. <laughs> <laughs> Could you imagine? Uh, you light them up and then you have to watch them. Oh, uh, yeah. <laughs> Take yeah. off, honey. Uh, I don't want to see that uh, anymore. Hey, you know how we've been talking about um, the Apple goggles like crazy, yeah, but they're right. Yeah. Did you see an ex Apple employee has already made a competitor that are glasses? Oh, I what? didn't see that. Look, pull They're up more br- like spectacles. Yes. Yeah. Pull up Brilliant Labs uh, AI glasses, Doug. Oh no. Yeah. So they're AI. So yeah. It's yes. Like so just, it's a competitor. Yeah. Uh-huh. So really? remember we were already talking about like oh now is there is it I mean is it is it comparable? I mean, I haven't wore either one, I wouldn't so, it's think hard, so it's hard. It's hard to say. I, I doubt you're going to probably compete no, with Apple at the first game because you still have like speaker. You, I, I mean, I think it's more like you know, it had all that op- there too. Really? Like, oh yeah, because they're tiny. It had, it had, it had the, like just like the Ray Ban ones. Where they have like a, you can oh, hear yeah, music and stuff like that. Like you could hear that. You could you could cue it by talking. So yeah, here it is, right here. Look at. Oh, yeah, wow. I guess I wouldn't know unless you try them, right? Oh wow, this is but, weird. This is getting crazy. Nutrition. Did you see that? Yeah, yes. Fact. You can look at food and it'll yeah. tell you what's in yes. it. Yes. Yeah. Did you see the other one? Translation. You can look at Chinese and then it will, it will translate it to you. Wow. wow this, yes. This is getting weird. It's going to be a new world. Here so you're for sure going to buy the goggles. No. You're not? Liar. No, I'm not. Real. I mean, what? I, think, I think it's neat to talk about, but I don't. You're going to buy it. Don't lie. I'm going to wait for version three. Not probably. real. I'm not. I, I'm so surprised. You're, really? You're you are the type to be curious enough. Well, I mean, one. okay. So, okay. I, I'm not could, saying like you're this aficionado, but. Yeah, yeah. As I say, I'm not like, like a tech Benjamin guy, Franklin glasses or something. <laughs> <No>. <laughs> yeah, like, Harry Potter. They got to wait. Like, get somebody I'd have to, that was you, styled. To, to get me to drop four grand on a pair of tech goggles, I'd have to have at least one application where I could see myself really getting they into it. They are four grand, aren't they? Yeah. They're and that's a that's a bit to drop on something that You're I just like, curious about. Yeah, that I'm right. just curious about. Like I'll, I'll go find some rich friend that bought yeah. it and then I'll play with theirs first. It. How much are but, these how much are these, Doug? Good question. Yeah, that's fine. Uh, Probably comparable. Pre order. Let's see. Oh, um, it's a pre order? So, <laughs> I mean they're like four grand or something. Yeah. I would think they would try um, and comp- that not not so expensive. Three hundred forty-nine bucks. Oh wow! Whoa. Well, we'll see. Yeah, I don't think they're the same. Oh yeah, no I apples. Think, come on, you can't. Who's gonna? You're some some startup. Yeah, I don't think it's like Apple. Yeah, it's real. I think it's like just stats and like maybe this one would image. Be, it's not like a video yeah. immersive. This is experience. what be my guess is this is an ex Apple employee who has been a part of all the other stuff. And just simplified it. He probably cheap. picked the thing, the five things that people cheap. were probably going to use the most. <laughs> yeah. And implement it, like, because you just saw the ones that are cool. Like, I think how cool that'd be to translate language. Yeah. How cool would that be to be in another country and be able to just- Are you kidding me? That'd be amazing. I think you're right, It'd be amazing to travel and uh, actually have something like that and be able to translate everything for you like that for diet, nutrition, to be able to look at stuff. Super useful items. Yeah. yeah, So I bet they distilled it down to the four most useful applications for this that they they thought of. It's a And that's the brilliant strategy, right? Instead of trying to compete- 
and say it's going to be as sophisticated as Apple. Mm -hmm. I'm going to pick the things that people are going to use most, and then I'll undercut them be a fraction of the price. I mean, that's way less. Yeah. Yeah. Now I'm interested. Now I'm interested in this one. I mean, I'm I'm curious about all of it. I just haven't thought that of one feature alone to me is 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 so valuable. Just being able to go to another country or read things in other languages and have you, it immediately. Because you travel so much. No, but just because <laughs> you can do that with your phone. <laughs> what do you mean from the gym? Go to Google his Translate house. will do that for you. Yeah, but you have to type it in, or can you put no, your camera? No, you just put a tank picture. Tank. Use a camera. Yeah. Oh, it does that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but you got to. You got a yeah, I know. screenshot at each time. Not on your face. Yeah, it would be way cool to just look at it and, and it translate right real time for you. I think would be a way cool Interesting. feature. <coughs> yes, yeah, so I don't know. This much closer to Minority Report. <sighs> totally. We I told are. you guys. I um uh I uh looked something up the other day because <clears throat> do you guys know how many days it takes to turn a behavior into a habit? Uh sixty. <clears throat> God, that's that's the number a lot of people throw out. You guys it is. Guess? But I've heard the I've heard the counter thirty. Yeah. So for I, 21 days, they actually yeah. have a data. I, on I used to tell people 60. They actually have, yeah, I don't know, uh, um, data on this. So uh, I looked this up. I'll, I'll, I'll pull it up for you guys. And it talks about, um, you know, uh, how on average it's 66 days, mm. but it can go between 18 to 254 days. Wow. Now, what they found in the study, of course, some things are harder to become habits than others, right? Sure. If it's like, Drink an extra glass of water a day. It's probably going to be on the shorter end. If it's like, you know, get up and wake up at 5 a.m. to go work out, it might take a little longer. Yeah. But what they found in the study was the most effective way to turn a behavior into a habit by far was to do a little bit of that habit every day versus a lot of it infrequently. Yeah. We've talked about this with workouts. Totally. Mm -hmm. So what they find is uh, instead of being like, okay, I want to I want to learn how to play the piano or learn a language or whatever or get this habit – Rather than focusing on it for two hours or an hour or twice a week or three days a week, you're better off doing 15 minutes, 10 minutes, 20 minutes every single day because yeah. that's how the body and the brain turns Speaking into of, habits. of that, like, and I, uh, you know, I've been playing guitar and this was like a big goal of mine is just to get back into it and doing that and just going down every day. I go down and just play something. Even if I'm not inspired, I'll just like pick it up just to like keep that momentum going. Uh, but I don't really play anybody else's songs ever. Like, it's just never been my thing to like learn songs. And it's like always frustrating because people that will hang out or want to play music with me, they're just like, oh, dude, do you know like play Inner Sandman? Or, yeah, exactly. <laughs> or like something. And I'm just like, no, I don't know it. But I could, I could listen to it and kind of play, you know, a crappy version of it by ear. Yeah. Uh, but so, anyways, that being said, there's like, all these like really cool apps now. And I, I've, I was just messing around with a tuner app that I used to, to get my guitar tuned and they just immediately did a feature on it. As I was like strumming a guitar, it heard the, the, uh, the tone of, of the string I was playing. And then it, it, it placed it into like an Oasis song and then the Oasis song, it had like the chord for it. And then it started kind of like following the ball, you know? Um, so I, it, it basically has the lyrics and then it has the, um, uh, you know, the chords on top of it. And so I was just started playing and then singing it. And then, uh, it was just really intuitive and like user wow. friendly. I was like, Whoa, it, wow. it, it, it's gone so far now in terms of like, I, I could see myself, um, if I really wanted to be devoted to like learning a bunch of people's songs and their catalogs, I could sit there in a really intuitive way, kind of play along to like a bouncy ball kind of so, way of doing it. Okay. Now what, this is how my brain goes when we're talking about the <laughs> Apple goggles, imagine, and this is coming for sure. How and and how how much this serves the the consumer and then also the the creative the creator. Uh, imagine paying for lessons in the virtual world with your favorite guitarist who could charge you a reasonable price because he's got 500 people yeah. Yeah. that are also being taught that same yeah, lesson dude. together. So he could literally charge you 150, 200 bucks an hour with the most famous guitarist in the world, which sounds sure. like, because he's making 500X that for that hour. They've tried like they're the all, master class version of exactly. that. But yeah, that would be next level. Yeah, because it'd be like a master like, class, but it's slash, him. You know, it's literally him you. live yeah. talking to you guys. Reads. All right, now place your fingers right here, <laughs> right? And you're wow. doing, now follow me like this. And there's 500 people. I want people, AI Van Halen and you're only having to pay what private lessons would cost for an average Joe person to do with you, but you're getting the best guitarist in the world, and he's making fifty thousand dollars an hour. For, for sure, that's going to happen. Even even yeah. augment that with augmented reality, where you look down at your hands and it sh and it shows it shows your hands where they should be. That's what I'm saying with yeah. the Apple goggles. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Yes, yeah. so the Apple goggles, already. you that's would brilliant. you would tune in and be. Watching it, watching it live. Oh and my god! Imagine how now, sick there's a bunch of different styles too of different 
guitarist, oh, right? Oh, yeah. So you could it's, learn. Yeah, it's all over the place. That's you could so, learn so many. Things. So yeah, it's gonna be cool to see how some of the how, these, how yeah. some of these applications. Like right now, I can't really wrap my brain around how I were. I would be like, oh, that would be awesome yeah. for me to be able I to do totally that. I would totally geek out on that. Yeah. yeah. Wow. Wow. Yeah. What's that show? Oh, they're using the Oculus to do that. Wow. Wow. This is going to be weird. Yeah. This is going to be interesting. Is see, it going to be see like- See if that's publicly traded or not? <laughs> no, I'm serious. I'm serious. Yeah, yeah. See it, if that's publicly I mean, traded. I, I, you know, I, I'm having a tough time wrapping my mind around how this is going to impact. I mean, there's so many jobs that this could augment. Oh, yeah. You know? Um God, I could literally sit and think about it for now. Especially, an hour. yeah, skilled, yeah, you know, very specific skilled jobs like that. Like uh, normally, you'd have to have a mentor and go through this whole apprenticeship. Like, but now to to sort of offset that with some kind of like software to take you through it, augmented reality. Because, I mean, the the biggest hurdle right now is the the entry level to the price of it, right? Like yes. so, because I could see how even like so we we've obviously this we have pivoted or moved into with the new company and into the coaching side, right? Imagine if all of our coaches, you know, could afford four thousand dollar goggles, but they all had those. Imagine actually coaching a client with the AR, you know, and having them like so they're watching us cue mm -hmm. and we're all doing it live together, and the, and it has all of our. This is the corrective exercises we would do. This is the deviation that we see. And like, I mean, that would be cool. Well, be very cool to be able to, and then we could actually offer it for a, a reasonable price and it's scalable for us because it's like, okay, I would, none of us would ever do that for even 500 bucks an hour. It's not worth our time right now. But if I had 50 trainers that were paying $150 an hour to do that, like, okay, now it's well, worth the time to do something like that. All virtual, all coaching that requires that, you know, a superior in person, I could see how augmenting, uh, augmented, you know, goggles will make that something you could do virtually mm -hmm. yeah. martial arts training. It could be it'll enhance personal it training. Sure. Yeah. I mean, because the big thing with virtually uh, coaching someone exercise is tough cueing someone watching how they move and see what's going on. But if you put, if you were to put goggles on and they look like they were in front of you, I don't well, know if it'll be exactly the same, but it'll be I, better than what you can do now. I, yeah. I mean, I just could see like a, a coach having just like the non-invasive kind of uh, glasses on right but then you see mechanically like the different points of oh, yeah. you know yeah like where where their body's varying and where you can cue more effectively like you might not see it with your naked eye but then you see like uh these different plot points yeah, you know, how, how cool would it be if uh. if when performing a squat it has the like a like a uh, like a green or like a neon like skeleton perfect version and so you can see the how the body is out of that yep yes you know what's you know weird what about, i was just on a podcast yesterday and i got asked this question about AI and it made me like, and by the way, this has already been happening. So it's not like this is a new thing, but we, we have lost so many skills because we've exported it to these outside tools. Like an easy example is, uh, remembering phone numbers. Does anybody remember anybody? I don't know your phone number, Justin. I talk to you every day on text. <laughs> I don't know what Doug's number is. Yeah, I, don't I don't know what Adam's either. phone number is. I know my old home number. I know my wife's cell number and that's pretty much it. Yeah. Only cause I, I, I realize I sing it. Yeah. You know, what? Two, four, five, three. You know, like oh. I, you just. What? <laughs> what? <laughs> you say, oh, forever. Like I remember my, my home. Uh, you sang phone it? Number. Well, yeah. When you were a kid, you learned it that way? Yeah. Oh, yeah. that's hilarious. See, I don't, don't want to say the whole thing. No, like, of course. My parents are going to get inundated so, with calls. Is Justin there? <laughs> Can I talk to that'd Justin? Be a, that'd be a funny. That they would still be a have funny a, prank. They still have a landline? They got a landline. My parents just got rid of theirs. Yeah, Wait, bro. I thought you. I thought they didn't even exist anymore. I thought, I thought they No, like, you can have Oh, it, so. no. And they have a really, like, uh, a cringe um, voicemail, too. Like, it's it's, no, it's old school. No way. Really old school. Yeah. Wait, is it an answering machine or is it a voicemail? Yeah, mail? answering machine. They have an answering machine? Answering machine. Oh, so, my God. With a tape? Hey, so you when you call your parents, you call the landline? Uh, well, I text them try one and then and I call. Yeah, I usually call that because they'll they put their phones. I don't know where they put their phones, but they're <laughs> they're out, you know, in the in the yard or you know. Sometimes when my kids are there, I'm like, hey, what? You know, I'm trying to get a hold of somebody. My, I'll call a landline. Yeah, no, my parents just got rid of their landline, and they. My mom told us uh, when she did it, and we were all so mad. <laughs> Which is funny because what's it? But it's because we were tied to it. You know, it was our number when I was a kid, and uh, we've always had that. See, phone number. so I don't yeah. remember my own phone number, uh, but I remember all my friends' phone numbers. Your old, their old numbers. Yes, oh, like from yeah. like junior high. Yeah, like, I remember like, a few of my friends. Yeah, I could, I could, from... I could do their number, their home phone numbers. Like, but mine, I don't remember calling mine. What, so, my question with this is, what skills do you think we're going to lose because of 
technology because we've already lost all, so many skills. All of them <laughs> Con- connecting with people, talking. Yeah, with, like, I know, mean that's that already proven. That? That's already proven. We're learning that. Well, using that skill. Yeah, I think like trying to remember facts and and like I, I think that like just even that process of uh, like processing information. You know, like we're outsourcing all of that now, and, and our phones like we just go right to search. And that's why every, anytime I bring something up, like I try really hard not to reach for my phone and look it up. I try to like, oh, like painstakingly try and remember it. This is like just something me and Courtney have like, you know, it's Worked almost on. like a game. You know, it's like how don't much. Don't use your phone. Yeah, don't yeah. use your phone. Uh, you, you know that um, some some good school districts, though, are 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 aware of this and they're yeah. integrating this type of stuff into to, now the to argument school, though, right? the argument is, is like they're that i mean is to try and teach these skills that were but that, what's the argument is why you know what i mean like the argument that people will make is well why why when well why some of them you're those? right some of them why like but some of them yeah i mean you, you, like obviously well, what if uh, one day you don't have access to it yeah but that's like saying like okay i don't know how to get clean water and hunt my own food and all that stuff and maybe you should learn at least a few sure, of those things. people will make that yeah. argument but then a lot of people don't but I think we're going so far that maybe it's going to tap into our psychology. Like maybe we need to know a certain amount of things, otherwise we become I don't know. Well, that's the are point. we not human? So, I think that's that's it, Sal. Yeah, I just like, don't like being too dependent. I yeah. guess is where I'm at. Yeah, I'm like that. Yeah, I mean, I think that I think we're I think we're beyond that. I think we we've outsourced so many of the basic things: yeah. hunt, get clean water, just like that. If literally, if you dropped all of us in the fucking alone, we'd all be fucked. Okay, even <laughs> even Justin over there who could build a house and we can't, right? Uh, I'll, like, I'll survive one more day. Yeah, exactly. Then... You would still die too. You would just last two more weeks in Sal and I, guys. Yeah, so, you would eat. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I mean, that that literally none of us would fire. because we've yeah. all lost the, those <laughs> primitive skills. I think for yeah. sure. And so, and you know, will they ever be necessary? I hope to God they're they're not. But I do think that they're we're, we're now we're now impeding into a, a th- the, somewhere where we haven't gone. Well, we before. start to have detrimental psychological effects. Yeah, we're That's yeah, and we're and we're losing personal connection. Like even as we like technology and all that stuff was advancing, say twenty years ago. It still required interaction with other human yeah. beings, mm-hmm. and we are still we're seeing pe- people in, in social, and we're completely starting to move away from that, yeah. and we're and we're justifying it because we have this social connection online, mm-hmm. because I can text Justin in five minutes across the country, and he can text me back. We think we're more connected to each other than we've ever been, but then we never have to see each other, and so and I don't think that people realize. The, that's what I mean. It's like a question to ask philosophers, not yeah, scientists. Yeah, what was totally. that? What was that movie with Sylvester Stallone where he's a cop and Joe Wesley Dredd? Snipes? No, no. Oh, Demolition uh, Man. Demolition, Demolition Man. Man yeah. Remember how they had sex in the future? They didn't oh yeah, even have they, sex. they don't even uh, talk. They, they don't connect touch. like their heads connect. Yeah, yeah they don't then, touch. They're yeah. just like yeah. And then, he, and then he's like, let's just have regular sex. She's like, ew, you yeah. don't touch oh, me. With like it's fluids. And <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's gonna be like that. Yeah. Oh god, oh, don't, sad. don't say that. I don't. I mean, I have faith in humanity. I think it's it's in our nature, especially if you're like progressive type of person where you push the boundaries. Yeah. You know, the there's going to be a, a, set, a subset of humans that push that boundary to the extreme, and yep. they're going to die sooner or get injured or have s- bad things happen to them. The rest of us wake up and go, "Oh, that was too far. Yeah. Maybe we should the moderate." The outliers that. are either going to prove certain things, or they're going to show you, like, "Oh, the detriments of it," mm-hmm. and it's like the rest of us sort of alter. Th- that's why I try not to be that. too alarmist about it because it, it, so far in history that it, that's how it's proven to play out for us is that yeah we like get worse kind of correct yeah and I, and, I, and I never want to fall into that I'm always afraid I'm going to fall into the the old the, the like every dad and grandpa do. oh bro, the, your yeah. generation oh this yeah. the, and so it's like fuck bro I, can I break that cycle and not be that guy and at least be like listen there's some things that have evolved and changed and the things that I'm most worried about instead of griping so much about it being aware of it and going okay well what can I what can I use of this or take from it and then what do I need all to all I know is the Hadron or? Collider accelerated the show shit out of that but what <laughs> what <laughs> ever since they oh, created yeah, that the, we're in an alternate been universe in a I buy it, simulation yeah. i buy it they turned that shit on and then they something happened something and everything happened weird. Dude. they fractured reality somehow I'm everything gonna, got weird yeah. i'm gonna i'm gonna i'm gonna buy a seat on the the migaloo five that's what i'm gonna do Mig- what? what is that <laughs> just, just make Migaloo, something up the, right now the migaloo five what i think that's that? how you say mr it. magoo that was my t- i had it, i put it up there in my notes to, like earlier in the week i forgot to show you guys what the hell is a migaloo oh i see a submarine yeah bro look it up Look it up, Doug. It's a Migaloo Five. It's it's a uh, it's the first luxury submarine. What? So like you know how they have, like luxury cruises. Yeah. 
So they have like a. I would so never you have like get on like C. Uh, is there yeah, like look transparent? Look at, look at, hopefully, Doug oh, no. will be able to I up. would never get on submarine. <laughs> never. That doesn't sound very safe. Not just forget how safe it is. It's the claustrophobia alone. You know, no way. Look at that. Oh, that looks beautiful though, huh? Isn't that sick? Bigaloo. Yeah, but what do you? You're underwater. So oh, come on, bro. Don't tell me. You look out the window and you see that shit. You're not gonna panic. Uh, yeah. Can uh, you see what else you got here, Doug, for pictures? No, dude. Okay, so there was another thing about telomeres. This guy lived it for a couple months underwater, like in this chamber. Yeah, and came back and they tested him and, and they said he'd like. Um, was it from the he pressure? Gained the like yeah, something about like he was more youthful looking, mm. and that like he looked like he he was like ten years younger. Is that why there's um? Don't they say there's like people in the in the, in the, the core of the earth? Okay, well you're taking this to oh, my like, <laughs> <laughs> This is real. <laughs> okay. They hey, they claim this too. is like this is like in the the future of like vacationing, right? And that they claim like, it's like this is like how you'll want to go. I don't like the idea of being uh, underwater, looking out the window, yeah, and I then think seeing you will if the rest of the world's all rubble. And shit. I mean, though, if there's a <laughs> wow. if there's a storm, you can like, you know, like <laughs> dive down. <laughs> Hey, hey, you're like a hey, billionaires. Shit's this getting is the fab. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Hey, billionaires. The only way you can vacation. That's underwater. Right. Underwater. <laughs> <laughs> Can't be underwater. This is, a, this is like the next billionaire flex. Like it's like, oh, cool. You have a yacht. I got a fucking submarine. I got a sub. Okay. Yeah. I got well, a sub you know that. The, I can see that. You know the big drug lords. Um, you know, like the cartel guys. They were. They have submarines. Yeah. There's if, a. They yeah. have some reason they're buying. There's a crazy, there's yeah. a good documentary that went into that. The guys that were doing that from Miami to Cuba yeah. that mm -hmm. had bought the the, the old- The Soviet sub? Bro, yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. That's it's, messed up. I know. It's crazy. Can you imagine being on the beach and seeing the, a hey, sub? Look, look, at the, look how luxurious this is inside, though. Oh, wow. That is See, gorgeous. Oh, it's it's beautiful. Yeah. Yeah. I, know. I don't know. That's kind of weird. Hmm. Hey, I got another study for you guys. You guys mm. ready? Oh, Check this one out. Good. It's on old people. This one's cool. <laughs> they did strength training on old people. They did- Adults who are 65 and adults who are 85, and they compared the results. You ready for this? Okay. Wait, wait, can we guess? What's, what, what is it going to so, show? What's it so, in relation so, to? So 65-year-olds and 85-year-olds. Okay. The rate of strength gain and muscle gain compared oh, to. Oh, what, oh, what do you wait, think they found? Wait, wait. So are are these people have already been lifting, or are they brand no, new? No, both. I, they were just normal. No, no, just normal. So I'm actually going to guess that they were relatively close. The 85-year-olds built almost as much strength as the 65-year-olds. As a percentage? Yes. The 85-year-olds did better. Ah, Ooh. see? As a percentage. Yes. But wow. it wasn't a huge difference. But what this shows is- that no matter how old you are, yes, that your was, body will build muscle yes, and build strength. Yes. Now, the limit, how far you can go and where you start, you know, that makes a big difference. Sure. But wow. Now, I, I experienced this, man. When I train, this is why I love training people in advanced age. When I would get somebody yeah, I had that. 75 or 80 or older, I would, it would, it was always so mind blowing to see the difference in a month. Yeah. I've just, yeah, this guy I trained who was like late seventies, and and just to see like he, him gaining five pounds of lean muscle was fast. insane. I, I was like, I, I, you know, I would, I don't know. I guess I was like very much. I thought maybe one pound at the most, or like you know, like g gain strength, but not really like put on mass. Well, and the other thing too is you do that for somebody who's above sixty five, and it's life changing. Oh yeah, no. you add five or ten pounds of muscle to somebody who's seventy years they old. They go from being dependent to being independent. Yes, sometimes that, it, like you know. You're the retired add, home stud, dude. You told me about. It. Oh, yeah. <laughs> you know when you're if you make it to He's that dance age, with all the ladies. Did you yeah, know that if great. you make it to that age, yeah, right, as the, as the and guy. you're not like and you're like functional, yeah, and you're in a retirement home, you are the big swinging dick. You're the there is the no bull. other guy. You're the bull. It's a bunch of it's a bunch of female widows and yeah. you. I see yeah. we dug. Yeah, no. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Hey, Apple. Hey, if my pump's still going in 20 years, we yeah. go check up on Doug very high percentage of STDs floating pimping. around those places. Doug's like, I don't care about the room. Let's see what all the, all the people yeah, yeah, yeah. Here look like. Let's see the ladies. Yeah. <laughs> I used to train a woman. It's like I'll, I'll sleep in a bathroom. If the I trained a here. woman that stayed <laughs> in a, uh, that lived in one of those places. By the way, they're expensive. I don't know if you guys know. Dude, how much my they cost. grandmother. Yeah, I mean, this was like ten years. It was seventy two hundred dollars a month, and that was that's not even like bro. Well, that's ten years ago. Yeah, yeah. over so, ten years ago. So I trained a woman. Point. She lived in one of these places, and she, and so there were I don't know how many people were in this home. Was a hundred or something like that? And I think there were five or six men. And she's like, and these guys are studs. She's like, when they walk in the room, all the women look. <laughs> they made a movie after that. And I'm like, what That's do they look the, uh, like? She's like, one of them's in a walker. The other one's in a wheelchair. Doesn't Morgan matter, Freeman? Dude. Yes, yeah, it's the yeah. Morgan Freeman movie. Yeah. who's that? They made a whole movie after that. You just got to keep, you just got to make it. What was yeah, that called? You just got to out, 
outlive them. And they make a big deal too. Like that, like there's already two guys there, and then the third guy is the, I don't know who's the. I forget who the new guy. I watched it a long time ago. It's actually a really funny movie. <laughs> they're they're in it. They're in a retirement home. There's only two dudes in the whole place, and then the third guy comes, and it's hey, like you know oh, what? Yeah. If you're a young man and you just you're just not popular with the lady, it's just it's a it's a it's a waiting game. Like it's a way to last case. long enough. <laughs> you'll get your turn. And you'll get all the ladies, dude. Just outlive everybody else. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> this is a game of attrition. Yeah. Oh, God. Just keep going. That's it, man. Just stay alive. That's all you got to do. <laughs> just stay alive. Maybe it's not your time. What you got, Doug? You fight it? I think it's just getting started. Uh, is with that what it's Morgan called? Freeman and Tommy Lee Jones. Oh yeah, yeah, it's, it's that one. Yeah, yeah. Tommy hey, Lee speaking Jones. of alive, I just I haven't used Organifi's peak power in a while. Yeah, and you guys see me pour some of that. It is that is the best. Stimulant based. Now you don't anything. feel that way just because you created it. No, no. <laughs> I feel like as I feel like I don't know if you're allowed to do the peak power commercials Why? because it's like complimenting yourself. It's good. It's like hey, yeah. there's this incredible pre workout. Hey, listen, I created. Whoever invented it. No, listen, I, <laughs> I'm Whoever telling. Put this together. I haven't yeah, had in a while. I, ha I had one dose. Myself. It's only 100 milligrams of caffeine. Low dose for me. Love it. It's the best feeling. It's, it's all right. It's all right. Shut up. <laughs> what a terrible commercial. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, Drew's going to be like, what the dick? fuck, bro? Yeah. You cut our sales just because you want to be a dick to me? Like, what's going on? Yeah, it's, no, it's, no, it's, it. it's the old Nana. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I like it. Anyway. Yeah. All right. The shout out for today is our forum. Now, we have a private forum. And in there, you have trainers, coaches, fitness fanatics, people who just get started. It's a great community. But the reason why I'm shouting it out is whenever we create and release a new program, that forum gets the biggest discount and they get it first. I'm not going to say anything else, but if you get in the forum right now, you're going to see some cool stuff. Go check it out. Ah, smart. All right. There's a company called Brain FM that makes music that is designed. Now, it's not just the music. There's sounds in there as well that are designed to induce states of mental either sharpness, sleepiness, meditative states, and it's all tested. Uh, by data. It's created by scientists and it's truly effective. Now, when I use Brain FM, within about five minutes, I could start to feel that state of mind that I'm looking for. So if I want more focus, I'll play the focus stuff. Five minutes into it, man, I am zooming in. If I want to sleep, I put on the sleep one. Or if I want to meditate and relax, if I'm anxious, I put the meditative one on. This stuff is remarkable. It's groundbreaking. No one in the world does this like Brain FM. Go check them out. Go to brain.fm forward slash Mind Pump and get yourself 30 days of access for free. Try it out. It'll blow your mind. All right, back to the show. First question is from Dreytella. What are supersets and how do you effectively program them? So a superset is when you put a cape on. I, set. Knew, I knew you'd have like a <laughs> set, but it's today. super. Yeah, no. Oh. Superset's a bodybuilding technique and you take two exercises and you combine them. And it's often two exercises for the same body part. Although there are what are called antagonist uh, supersets where it's like Compound chest sets. and back or something like that. But mostly supersets are two exercises for the same body part. And the idea is to fatigue the muscle more than you could with just that one exercise. And you <clears throat> typically want to pick, again, this is not a rule uh, in stone, but typically you pick a compound and isolation movement as your superset. Um, and it just, it's great for getting a better pump. It is a high intensity technique and it's an advanced technique, meaning it's not valuable to use all the time, but if you're consistent, you got good sleep, good diet, like occasionally using this, um, it's, it's, it's fun and it could definitely push you past the plateau. We've obviously, we've utilized this tool. It's a, it's a valuable tool. We've utilized it in a handful of our programs, um, the way I use it personally, uh, because I'm not f always following like a program is normally time. So yeah. that, so when I teach clients that it's a valuable tool, it's not something we want to do all the time. Um, so, you know, you could follow a program like maps anabolic phase three has some of it in there. Maps aesthetic has supersets in there, obviously. Uh, and those, those programs, we, we do that, but I would much rather teach a client on, Hey, what's going to happen is sometime in your life, more often than you think, probably you're going to be cut short with time for a workout. And, you know, most workouts, your traditional workouts are 50 minutes to an hour. And so, Hey, I could literally do that same amount of work by pairing all the exercises and short. I, now I have to reduce 
the weight dramatically yeah. because that's if I do like a you know a bench press and then go into like dips or a skull tr- skull crusher a movement like that it takes a lot out of you but I, I, I'll move through the workout in half the time and so and because I don't do it all the time sends this great signal to the body to adapt and build muscle so <clears throat> but like anything else people fall in love with the response that the body gives if you've never done it before and they go oh shit supersets are the answer yeah. to building all this muscle yeah. and so then they chase it and they do it all the time and then of course like anything else it it, it stops no i mean to be truth be told probably five percent of my sets and workouts are supersets literally 95 mm-hmm. percent are straight sets but that five percent can make a difference you have to utilize these appropriately um now again a couple of rules of thumb not necessarily in stone though compound to isolation or isolation to compound both of them do different things they feel different and antagonistic supersets are the best uh time saver ones because you're not necessarily hammering the same muscle but you're working like chest and back and you're not really fatiguing the back when you hit chest so you can go back to back and then you cut some time next question is from kelly the running realtor why do i feel it in my hip flexors when i plank how can I correct my form? It's because, hey, I'm just going to take a shot at this. It's from all that running. Oh, <laughs> oh man. Just, just going you know, to take, take a shot in the dark on this one, yeah, Kelly. I and I bet it. it's all that running. So you're, 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 first off, your form, and we'll get to what Adam said. That's, that's, <laughs> I didn't even catch that. But your form, definitely. When you plank, first off, a plank, you're using two points, your forearms mm. and your elbows and your toes. And so everything in between has to stabilize to keep you up. Well, everything in between includes all the muscles that prevent you from folding half, which also include the quads. They include the tibialis muscles and the calves and the pecs, but mainly they include the hip flexors and the muscles of the core. Now, you can change your form to emphasize the core more than the hip flexors or vice versa. Most people do a plank and it's a hip flexor plank. And how do you know this? You look at them, they have an arch in their low back and their butt sticking out. Yeah. Okay. You want to make this a tuck core your plank. Tailbone. Tuck your tailbone. It's it's uglier. It doesn't look that good at the gym when you've got your tailbone tucked or whatever, your butt's kind of yeah. whatever. But that is your core now contracting and supporting you. So that simple fix right there will make all the difference. You did a great viral video on our YouTube channel, Mind Pump TV. The guys will probably link it in here so you can see it. But another reason why that and more likely why you feel it more than probably some maybe your friend or someone who's doing it right next to you, why they don't feel like that is because of the running. Mm-hmm. Your, your hip flexors are just work. Your, your your hip flexors are dominant because it when you run you use a lot of your hip flexors and so that is a dominant muscle and so the default muscle recruitment pattern when you go into a plank for yourself is to use those hip flexors so you feel it in those hip flexors instead of activating the core and planking correctly your body defaults to what it's used to which is the yeah. pattern from running all the time it's- which. This is super common. And uh, again, it's obviously a shot in the dark that you're a runner, but I'm guessing <laughs> that you are. Guess. And and that is probably what's doing it. But a simple solve to that is because we could totally unpack this and address the running mechanics and probably the corrective work you should do based off of the fact that you probably run all the time. But let's pretend we're not going to fix all that other stuff and we're just going to solve the plank simply yeah. doing what Sal said or following the video, I mean, which you did on YouTube would solve that. At least like, you know, bring those hips up a bit too. I know a lot of times people complain about their lower back pain with, with planks uh, for similar reasons, but yeah, to, to tuck the tailbone and to really engage, you know, the abdominals. I mean, it, it definitely enhances that exercise a lot more. I also did a, a video uh, that showed something called, that I called uh, hip flexor deactivator crunches. So whenever you activate a muscle, the opposing muscle naturally tends to relax. It doesn't always happen, but it's a nice little hack. So if I want my bicep to relax, I'll activate my tricep. If I want my back to relax, I'll activate my chest. If I want my hip flexors to relax, I'll activate my glutes. So this is a crunch where your heels are up on a bench and you come up off the, you you elevate your hips, squeeze your glutes, and then do crunches. And what this does is it allows you to get the hip flexors out of the movement. And the reason why hip flexors are so involved with people when they do ab exercises because people think if they fold their body forward or they bring their legs up, it's automatically a core exercise. It's not. The hip flexors can do all the work or the core can do all the work. When the core does all the work, the movement is in the low back. You see it in the flexion and extension of the low back. When the hip flexors do all the work, it's all in the hips. So when you see people doing leg raises and you're watching them and their body looks straight except for their legs coming up and it's their hips that are flexing, 
That's hip flexors. Next question is from Eck Betts. Have you ever had to fire a client because they just didn't want to listen to your advice or do what you were telling them to do? Yeah. Yeah. You know, <laughs> I, boy, um, later on in my career, I had a different philosophy around this, but early in my career, it was like, and I, you know, I was, I wasn't quite this harsh, but it was like my, my way, the highway, if you don't take this serious, I'm not going to train you uh, type of deal. Later, the reason why I would get rid of a client was would be more like you're not showing up for appointments, you're not respecting my time. But if you showed up and you did some stuff and you weren't like a jerk to me, then my goal was to continue to train you because it was better than nothing. And I had a, I had one experience. I've talked about this many times on the show, but I had this woman. I had what I you know this this talk with her. Where I sat her down and called her on her or on her lies that you know she was tracking her food because she wasn't. I made her cry because I caught her in a lie and then, and she, cause, and that's why she wasn't getting results. And then she never came back. And I would bet you that she probably never went back anywhere again. And I, I remember it was a week later. God, you ruined her life. And I, yeah, I mean, maybe it still makes me sad to think about it. And I think about it now. It's like, you know, had I confronted her and she denied it and I said, look, it's not a big deal. If you're not being honest or whatever, let's just keep going. Like I might've had a better chance. I might, I, at the very least she was working out. She wasn't doing that before. So this changed for me, but as a trainer, you have to determine what you, what you'll tolerate and what you want to work with as well. So. Yeah. I had a, a very like a type a, like abrasive, like ver I was a young trainer, so I didn't really quite have the uh, experience and also the confidence to, to confront and check, you know, that energy right away. So I was like trying my best to like accommodate, uh, uh, but do it in, in a way that was like, you know, more sound and, uh, safe and, and not necessarily what she wanted, but was like somewhat close, like it was to the experience of a high intensity type workout. Uh, but I mean, she wanted to go to the point where she would vomit and it wasn't a successful workout unless she vomited. I'm like, I think you have a problem. And, <laughs> and she did not like to hear that. I remember that client. You remember, you know yeah, exactly what yeah, I'm talking yeah, about. Yeah, I think yeah, Dirk yeah. had her before I, me. I know who you're talking about. But, um, and I just was like uncomfortable with it. And I kept, I'm like, I'm uncomfortable with this. I'm not going to take you to that level. It's not a healthy habit, you know, to do that. And it's just not promoting anything healthy. And so, uh, yeah, that was when I had to, I'm like, I can't work with you anymore. That was so, the only one. So I have, I have some unpopular opinions around this. Uh, to a trainer, like if I'm talking to one of my trainers who is challenged with this, one, uh, I would ask, do you have the luxury to fire anybody? First of all, so when you're building your client, uh, you know, uh, your client list is early on in the beginning, I took everything and anything and put up with a lot of shit I didn't put up with 10, 15 years later. So when you're, when you're trying to get the practice and you're trying to build your client portfolio, it takes some time before you do that. And firing somebody when you don't even have a, a, a solid income from that is a, a luxury most of us don't have. So that would be the, the first thing. The second thing I'd say that's unpopular is that uh, leadership rule number one, uh, everything is my fault. So when uh, these types of clients, like it wouldn't just be like I fire them and then I move on. It would be like, well, where did I go wrong? What did I not communicate when this person signed up with me? What did I, where did I, where did I lose the, the leadership? Where did I lose the control? Where did I, you know, miscommunicate and allow this person to think these behaviors or these things were okay? And how do I correct that? And what, and do I put up with this client because I need the clientele right now? And then I never make that mistake again. Or am I in a position that I can correct course because it's something that can be corrected? So I, you know, since most of my career, I was actually training trainers. I would really hone in on the trainer and be like, you know, you, we have to own this. Like you have to figure out a way to be a better trainer and not everybody's easy. Um, and there's going to be some people that are a pain in the ass. Now, as you get better at your craft, one, you'll be able to see this stuff beforehand and cut it off. Like you'll know the type of client they're going to be before you get it. Like, and you can set the stage and yeah, set the expectations. Exa exactly. Yeah. Right. Like that. And and that and that's what this lesson is, right? So whatever this client is is, is challenged, right? So I don't know that you says it says listening to your advice and do what you're telling them. That's, that's the other thing too. Like, have you guys ever had a client listen to all your advice? No, no. that no. doesn't exist. Hey, that, and that's, that's why I'm, a, that's like the the dream client, the unicorn client. The, and this is why I'm digging totally. back at the trainer who's asking this question: is that uh, no, I would not de de default to it's the client's fault. I would default to 
what what can I do better? What, what what am I not doing? One of my greatest success stories was a client who I who I wouldn't have taken on as a younger trainer precisely because I had this attitude. This woman comes in, and literally first words out of her mouth, she walked. She was referred to me by a, one of my doctor clients. She walked in, "Hi, I'm here to see you. I'm only going to work out once a week. I'm not going to change my diet, and I do, I'm not doing any exercise on my own." That's the first words out of her mouth, and I said, "No problem." And she looked at me surprised. I said, I can work with that. This woman eventually started working out three days a week, <laughs> changed her diet. But it took us, you know, a few years to get here. Right. But old me would have been like, sorry, you're not serious. I'm not going to work with you. Right. And I would have never been able to positively impact this individual. Plus, later on, I always looked at this like a challenge. Yeah. Like I'd say, okay. They you know, need I the understand. most help. Out yeah. of, uh, anyway, a lot yes. of these difficult clients. Yes. And when I hear so a trainer saying some of this, I think of like, well, okay, well then maybe this person, you're throwing too much at them right now. Maybe you don't even, you, th you think just telling them to make a couple diet changes or show up to their appointment three times a week is yeah. not a lot. And it's really basic to ask them that and they can't follow through on it. Well, Maybe you need to reevaluate that. Maybe you are over committing adjust them to things. Your plan. Yeah, adjust what you're saying. And this is why, too, if you've listened to the show long enough, you've heard me say these things where you want to set these really low bar, easy goals for them to uh, they can obtain so they can start to stack wins. You got to meet them where they're at. Right. Like and that might be, hey, we're not going to worry about diet yet because it seems like this is just really tough right now. Right now, I just, I want to keep you consistent with doing these movements and showing up to the gym this many times a week. And like, let's just set a goal that we do that. Right. And then, and then after that, you can start to build on that. So yeah, no, I I'm not a fan of of defaulting to if, the client is bad. It's like I can I can be better. I hope whoever asked this is listening, but go to mindpumpfitnesscoaching.com, look at our course. This is the stuff that we teach trainers and that you don't learn in certifications. Is and this is what will make you successful. Next question is from Karen E. Izzo. I'm looking to get my eleven year old son started on weightlifting. He is an active athlete involved in football, soccer, wrestling, and lacrosse. What are the basic moves I should get him started with? And at what point should I introduce him to a MAPS program? First off, what a great blend of sports. You know, they mm -hmm. talk about those studies on young athletes. I mean, you got wrestling, lacrosse, soccer, football. Now, technically, you probably don't need to do any additional strength training if mm -hmm. they're doing a lot of these things yeah, often. Yeah, they're pretty active. Pretty active. They're moving their bodies in different directions. Like, if it was one sport, then I would recommend certain exercises to offset, maybe over. Yeah, I'm not sure this person even has an off season. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, I don't know what the seasons are for all these, but you, you guys know better than I do. Um, if, yeah, if no, if you're, if, long, well, if you're running four, if you're a four, it's got to be your long, right? Yeah, There's if you're no a four sport athlete, it. you're yeah. yeah, you're running year round. If so. anything, it's like for me, it, it would just be. Uh, mastering like one or two of these compound lifts, but like with light load. And if you wanted to even introduce that, but to your point, there's probably not even an off season uh, opportunity right now because that's four sports is a lot. Here's what's going yeah. to give you the biggest bang for your buck with your 11 year old. If they're in fact doing all these sports and it's a year long, the biggest bang for your buck is going to be sleep and diet with yeah. an 11 year old. Yep. Yep. Make sure they go to bed at the same time every night. Yes. They're not on electronics before bed. That's Huge. a big one now. Make sure they wake up at the same time every morning, including weekends. Um, and so go to bed, wake up at the same time, no electronics before bed, and then make sure that they eat adequate protein. So have him eat his body weight in grams of protein. Those would be the biggest things. I'd probably teach him some very basic uh, mobility moves so that way he could prime and do these yeah. things before a lot of these sports to uh, make sure that uh, you know the, the joints are – are are supported and yeah. uh you know the, provide stability there so just just added reinforcements because this is a lot of demand on the body because and so i honestly don't think that adding load and any kind of workouts mm -hmm. would be beneficial no now no, if, if no. there's maybe an off season yeah no this kid had a an, but and by the way i want to make a point that even though we're saying that he doesn't have an off season and that's when we would do this, it's what you're doing is perfect. I wouldn't change the sports that he's doing. It's a nice blend. And playing four four sports in a year at that age is the time you do this. Yes. Like this is like so good for him. Yeah, he's Busy to be to be doing all this and, stuff yeah. and it's just but thinking because maybe and it, i'm sure he's probably a, a high performing athlete because he's doing all these different sports w thinking that i want to do more uh in in pushing his body in the strength and training that's actually not ideal it'd be yeah. uh you making sure that he's getting adequate protein and rest and recovery and mobility stuff would be the best way to complement and then organically what is going to happen as he gets older is yeah. He'll probably narrow down to probably three of these sports and then eventually have an off season. And then in the off season, 
or in summers when he has time off from the sport, like this is where he gets the, introduced. The hardest the thing with an 11 year old kid playing all these sports is going to be diet, 100. percent Getting him to eat adequate protein and is, sleep, probably in sleep. Those two things are, are going to be the, the big. But if he has an off season. Basic strength training where he learns uh, movements or suspension training where he moves his body. But at some point, what may happen, he's 11, so it's not, not now, but at some point, he may need to put on weight. He may really like football, and coach is like, you got to get a little bigger, a little stronger. In which case, then you want to do an off-season where you're doing less of the sport and doing it a couple days a week, like two days a week of strength training, full body, and eating calories. A uh, young man lifting weights, eating enough calories, they put on strength and muscle in a, in a pretty effective way. Look, if you love the show, head over to mindpumpfree.com and check out all of our free guides. We have a lot of free fitness guides. You can also find us all on Instagram. Justin is at mindpumpjustin. I'm at mindpumpdestefano. And Adam is at mindpumpadam.